Now, just to um, tell you a brief story, uh, my ex-head of department is a chap called Professor Martin Shepherd. Um, he told me last year that he got a very bright PhD student long ago called John Canaru. And he said, well, the two of you should meet. And we met. And a year later, here we all are. Wow. So um, we sat down and had that famous cup of coffee. Uh, he was very interested in science gateways. And we kind of brainstormed what we could do. And the reason why I'm saying this is this is what happens in this project. We brainstorm a lot. And then we come up with innovative ideas. In this case, a way of tracking motorcycle accidents. And then we bring volunteers to Hackfests and help to collaboratively create the idea for real. So you're going to hear more about that later, but I'd just like to formally thank John uh, because he's put a lot of hard work in here to make this happen. So uh, a formal thanks. Uh, there you go. I'll stop embarrassing you now. So I'm the coordinator. Um, I'd like to ask a question. What links this? This is a tub of petroleum jelly that I bought from a lady in Sangarama in northern Tanzania last week from the Living Labs project there. Um, what links that to my par, image processing for brain extraction, segmentation, etc., to the Kenya National Public Health Gateway? And the answer is they're all beneficiaries of this project. So the Living Labs project in Tanzania is getting a science gateway to share testimonials of local innovators, such as the lady who created this herself from a collaborative training in the Living Lab. So those testimonials can be used to train more innovators in the Sengarama region and in other areas in Tanzania where they're widely impoverished to what I would say fairly standard scientific applications, such as what I've just shown you with my part, and Ben's going to talk about it, that to us later, to a way of tracking something which is a, a big problem in health in a region, which in this case is motorcycle accidents in Kenya. Now, our project, the Saigo project, is a collaboration between, just check the time, uh, multiple partners from Europe and Africa and Scandinavia, but the bottom line is, we're trying to leave behind a legacy of open materials to enable anybody to accomplish what we've done in the future. So in terms of sustainability of the project, what I'm going to share with you is, how did we create the people to create the Kenyan National Public Health Gateway? Well, we trained them. Well, how did we train them? Well, those materials are available for free. What are they working on? They're working on gateway technology, which is available for free, etc. So the one goal of this project is to leave behind a sustainable future to create highly innovative applications in Africa um, through interdisciplinary collaboration. We finish in April, and it's been an exciting two years and uh, as the usual story goes, uh, this is the end of the beginning, not the beginning of the end. So the science project, the SciGay project, uh, energi energizing scientific endeavor through science gateways and infrastructures in Africa. We have the principle that open science approaches can significantly increase the accessibility and visibility of African science. And when we talk about this, we think in terms of openness of data, openness of software results, and then the translation of those through to impact in uh, the real world. So everything we do is promoting those principles. This presentation is basically a quick overview of what we've done and what materials are av available that were created in the last sort of year and three quarters. So the main thing we've created is science gateways and infrastructures, and we've done that through four main work packages. One is support and the education. Another one is liaising with communities and then the development of services, and then the, the dissemination of this. So first of all, so we all know what we're talking about, because as Elizabeth N said, it's not a technical uh, day today. So just so we're all uh, on the same page, what is a science gateway? 
So a science gateway or a virtual research environment or a virtual laboratory is, for a lot of people, a web page with links that you can click on. What's behind is ways to g allow you to use the data and the software and the computing resources needed by a community to do its research. This is incredibly complicated to achieve, but by using standardized software and protocols, it is achievable if you're trained in doing this in a certain way. Open Science Gateways leverage larger scale collaborations by embracing at its heart the principles of open science. And Roberta will talk more about that uh, in the talk that follows mine. What we've developed in the project is this um, elements of this large diagram. So we have ways of reaching out and finding data and software and people. That's the knowledge base. We have ways of storing data openly with unique identifiers so it can be searched and discovered. The open access repository. We have ways of creating science gateways. We have ways of helping people to collaborate together. And the, this is the infrastructure forum. And then importantly, we have our online courses. And again, Roberto in the next talk will talk more about this complex diagram, which is our Open Science Co Commons for Africa. So what have we produced in the project? Um, now, I'm not going to go through any of these in detail, but I just want to give you an idea of how much there is. So we have lots of guides and educational material that were created. So for example, application integration and delivery guides. Um, I'm often asked, where is this available? Well, it's on the website. Okay, so all this you can download right now, uh, read and use. So code and documentation are also available on GitHub under um, various different Creative Commons licenses. And what that translates that to normal people is GitHub is a common uh, website to share software and data over and above what we've created here. There are various different guides that we've published to actually creating science gateways, and these are examples of just four of them. We have lesson plans. So when we first started, we tested out these ideas in an online winter school, uh, which was done a year ago. Experience of that, in and this, this online uh, winter school was dedicated to training people on how to create science gateways and science gateway applications. After we tested that, and then we went live with our summer schools and hack fests. As part of that, we have various service provider courses that NRENs can use to leverage common infrastructures for science gateways. And as I said before, it is all there online to find, download, take home, read, study, or whatever. We also run these through Open edX, which is the latest um, online courseware. And again, you can download Open edX modules. We have a lot of videos, um, which are uh, almost all in English. We've taken that as a common language for everybody. Um, We'll be very keen to have volunteers to help translate that into other languages. Always open. But these underpinned, which is one of our major deliverables from this project, which is the e-summer, um, e, sorry, e-research summer hack fest. Um, it ran twice last July for various reasons. Um, but as you can see from the topics, it's not just a training, um, package. It's a proper school where students can come and learn about the latest in things like big data analytics, semantic federations, etc. It's run in the spirit of an innovation workshop, a living lab. So people joining us in these hackfests don't just sit, sit there and listen to people talking and talking and talking. It's, there's a little bit of that, but the majority of it is, right, you've brought a problem to this hackfest. How can we make that real? And again, all that is available. Uh, whoop, I'm going the wrong way. All that available for you to download. So we start with use cases. Uh, we use a REST API interface to the infrastructure that we're providing. There are multiple services and tools available. And obviously, as we have a champion graduating from our, our Hackfest, that champion adds more services and tools to the catalog that's already available. So this is self-perpetuating and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And because it's using standardized technology, it'll run anywhere, not just on our platform, on any infrastructure. The structure of that can be found on the website. Uh, and as I said, it's given rise to the champions. This web page is slightly out of date because there's far more. Uh, ben is one of the champions. He'll be very happy to know that he, he, by alphabetical ordering, he's the first. <laughs> 
Addy is one of my PhD students in the second, but they're all, everybody's got a story. And I encourage you to click on the website and find out more about each and every one there. There's more information and more information and videos and videos and videos. There's, the, there's so many things there. And each of these people, uh, Diana, for example, there are giving testimonials. And that helps new people come along and very quickly get up to speed and the right way of thinking about innovation. Just to make sure that we're doing the right thing as well, we have other activities in the project. So we have a, an ongoing survey about e-infrastructure's use, users. And that's what we found a very good way of capturing ideas for more infrastructure and science gateway applications. And we run, as an ongoing activity, uh, a sanity check, if you like, just to make sure that everything we're providing and developing fits um, into regional development plans for other NRENs, sorry, other RENs such as ASREN, Ubuntu Net, uh, WACRA, and et cetera. And we also make sure that what we do is compatible with cloud. Um, EGI has various uh, MOUs with cloud providers in Europe and across the rest of the world. So um, we'd like to think any services that we create can run um, through our system on any cloud uh, that is EGI compatible. Working with the communities, we've got various activities there. The main, the first one is the infrastructure discussion forum. And I encourage everybody to look at that because it's already a, a large wealth of material about people coming and using infrastructures and science gateways in a variety of disciplines. Um, and that's an example of what it looks like. Uh, we have a map on the website that shows um, who we've been working with. And those little colored chevrons um, have grown and grown and grown. And what I particularly like is they're not just looking at one part of Africa. They're spread across the continent. As part of the service activities, we take experiences from that and we, we sift and boil down to create common services. So, we, for example, one of these is the SciGare Open Access Repository. Roberta will talk more about that. But basically, it's a standardized platform where scientists can um, upload their data, white papers, uh, and share these. And this is such an easy technology to adopt. Arguably, any university uh, in the world could adopt that very, very quickly and enable scientists in that university to start sharing their uh, research outputs. We have many other federated services. And there's a few there we have from the, the Kennet Federation. Uh, that list continues to grow. Uh, we have taken our original product, the African Science Grid Gateway, and we've moved that into Africa. That's now running at DIT in Tanzania. Uh, Tanzania. Um, and our list of identity providers, where well, I don't want to get too technical, but when you're logging on, you need to be your credit credentials need to be recognized by somebody. Um, internationally, that's done by identity federations and uh, certification authorities. I've just put that up there because it shows two um, leading ones there with the Kennet one uh, and NGRN, which is just down on the, the far side there. And then dissemin dissemination and training, um, I've given a hint already. Um, we have an excellent website, which is um, it will take you a long time to go through all the materials there, which I'm glad because it means we've done a lot um, and it's all very, very interesting. Uh, there's a French translation of that coming online soon. We have more details about the Open Science Platform that Roberta is going to describe, and we have a clickable map. So you can highlight any of the regions on that map, um, and click on it, and it will bring up more information about what that uh, is, it, region is uh, doing and how it contributes to open science. We are trying to push and help researchers push um, open science in their own countries. We have an ongoing permission, uh, a petition, and if you've not signed that, can I encourage you to sign it? Because the more signatories we have, it means you as a scientist can take that to your head of department, to your university to say, look, there are lots of people wanting to move open science. Um, why can't we do it here? There's evidence that people are actually bothered about this as a, an international initiative. We have the search, a searchable service catalog, which brings all the, uh, um, the, uh, the services together. Because we realize there's so much material there, we have a getting started page. So, um, for example... Um, what open access repositories in my country or region exist, um, what scientific applications I could use and how. So there's lots of links to quickly get you in the right sort of mindset to um, start using our systems. And then almost finally, we've done plenty of workshops. The one at the top is where we are today. Um, I'm putting that there because all the slides of the previous workshops are available for you to have a look at at any time. Um, and events, uh, we're specializing now in the Hackfests and there's going to be a fascinating one next week, uh, next week in Addis uh, in Ethiopia. And just to underline this, all the Hackfest materials are available for you to use and download um, at your convenience. So just to underline things, we are 
about promoting science gateways and e-infrastructures as a bedrock for collaboration and interdisciplinary research. We recognize African researchers um, have so much to give. So how do we make that uh, those outputs of that, that research visible to the rest of the world? So we're helping to do that, and we're doing that through um, exciting training programs, the open science platform, and these wonderful individuals that we met over the last year and a half, the champions, who are promoting their own work, but also promoting um, the benefits of open science and science gateways in Africa. So thank you very much. Thank you.